We're getting to that point in the year where everyone looks back and then everyone looks forward. The dedicated Instagram posts, the New Year's resolutions, the highlight reels. And on today's video, I am going to do just that. What are the top five things this year has taught me and how can we make next year better than the last? Number one, Parkinson's law in action. One of the greatest lessons from this year and one of my objectives looking forward is to create a greater sense of urgency in life. There's a common concept called Parkinson's law and it's that work expands to fill the time that we allocate to it. So what this means is basically if I say I'm going to write an essay in two weeks or in two months or in two days, very often the quality of the work isn't going to be too different in these three different scenarios. And sometimes if you give yourself an outrageously tight timeline or an outrageously tight deadline, you'll end up doing a lot more than you expected and you won't procrastinate. Whereas if you give yourself an unlimited amount of time, you risk that thing taking forever. So creating these false deadlines, for me, I feel is so important. It's not about being tense or being stressed out or burning out. It's more about being focused and demanding from yourself that your most important goals are your priority. And so they are achieved as soon as possible. By doing this, you will eliminate all the distractions, the excuses, the fears. You give yourself no choice, but to find a way to get that thing done. On the projects and the side hustles that I didn't create a sense of urgency, I found that it dragged out for five Far longer than it should have and I wasted so much time when what I really should have done was just fall fast, fail fast and fail forward. Now everything important that I want to do I will move fast no matter how ambitious it is I'll give myself a ridiculously short time frame, a fraction of the time that I think it's possible to get that thing done and then create a sense of urgency. This is the way to focus on what matters and declutter everything else. Number two, compounding. I've got three quotes on my phone background. And if you if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this on my story. It's you're the youngest you'll ever be, compound effects and what is yours will come to you. And the compound effects that really applies to so many areas of your life when it comes to investing, when it comes to making money, when it comes to growing an online presence, it really is about patience and time. In the last couple of weeks, this channel has grown more than I had ever expected. And I do believe it's because I was so consistent and I went all in. I remember one morning, the morning where I recorded six key habits that made me six figures, I recorded it after having three hours of sleep. I was out the night before for my friend's birthday and then I had a wedding the next day and I was so close to just staying in bed and saying, saying I'm not going to do it today but I forced myself to get up and just get that thing done. The same thing happened with today's video. My plan was to switch off until the new year and I thought it's fine no one's going to notice no one's even going to care and then I got my phone out and I saw those words glaring back at me compound effects and so I pushed myself up and I said no let's do one roundup video and then you're done. The power of consistency is these moments where you don't want to do it that will make all the difference and it's these moments where most people just call a day. So this is where the discipline needs to show up because that's when it's the most valuable. Discipline doesn't matter on the days that are good, you don't really need it, but discipline is on the days that are bad, that's the bit that most people don't overcome. I also want to add something that I feel like most people forget at this point and it's that consistency alone isn't everything and it's not all that you need. It's consistency combined with improvements that makes a difference. There is something called the mere exposure effect. It's basically that doing something so many times makes us believe that we've become good at something completely independent of our actual performance. And we don't want to confuse consistency with improvement. We want to combine them both together. The third thing I've learned this year is not to box myself in. There is a direct correlation, I feel, between the amount of respect that you have for yourself and the amount of respect you get from other people. There have been many, many times where I've been in a room with people who are far more experienced than me and have many years ahead of me. And there was a specific time where I was in a meeting and I expressed my thoughts and views on something that had contradicted what someone much older to me and much more experienced to me had said but I backed it up with evidence and with facts. And after that meeting, we were walking out and he pulled me up on it and told me to stay in my own lane. And at that point, I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't protect my value and I didn't respect myself enough. I didn't say, no, what I said was valid and these are the points that back it. And then a few months later, something similar happened. It was a similar instance and I handled it completely differently. At that point, I fully protected my boundaries and I demanded respect. Did I feel comfortable doing that? Not at all. It was very hard, but it was after that moment and demanding my worth where I saw the attitude completely change. Sometimes you've just got to shut off the detractors with your work because there are so many people that will support you, but there's also going to be some people who try to box you in through telling you what you can and what you can't do, through expressing their views on your abilities. And it is hard to remove yourself from moments like this, but standing up for yourself and backing your corner is only something you can do. And I've come to realize that the amount of respect you have for yourself is typically, not always, but it is typically the benchmark of how someone else will respect you. Number four, the Manson and the 80-20 rule. As I was writing my reflections of this year, I 
really came to the realization that I haven't been able to explore everything that I've wanted to. There are so many things that have made me feel like I haven't fully lived my life. I have procrastinated. I've undervalued things that actually matter. I've engaged in conversations where I shouldn't have. And so going into next year, I'm aligning more of me into things that actually matter. And I've made a list of non-negotiables for next year. These aren't uh, money related. These aren't wealth related. These aren't project related. These aren't side hustles related. These are just things that I want to do so that I can't look back and say, I never fully lived my life. In the book, The Subtle Art, the author Mason says that we go through life giving a too much. He says that we need to choose constructive values and standards and use them to decide what things we care about and then reject the rest. And for me, that includes wasting time on things that I don't really enjoy and that don't align to my bigger goals because Time is very real, it's very fleeting, and I'll be combining his view with the 80-20 rule, which is that 80% of your results come from 20% of what you do. And this can apply to so many different areas of life. Figure out what 20% of your actions, 20% of your values, 20% of your thoughts produce 80% of the outcomes in your life, and then focus your energy on those. The fifth most important lesson this year has taught me is the concept of unique pairing. Most things in life have been done. Nothing is really that original anymore. And so we don't really have to worry about having an original idea because we can still take ideas from original sources and make them our own. So even if you read all the new self-development books, when you get to a certain point, you realize that the key messages keep tying into each other. They were all discovered years and years ago, but they're just conveyed in different ways. And before I started this channel, I thought, it's kind of pointless. There are a million and one personal finance channels. Why would anyone want to hear this stuff from me? But people really resonate with the same message differently depending on who it comes from and the way it's represented. So I've come to realize, don't take yourself out just because you think a market is saturated. Find a way to do it by adding your own authenticity and unique pairing and unique twist to it because a lot of life is about what you're meant to do uniquely. Statistics are staggering. There's 8 billion people in the world, but you'll never find two people that can perfectly substitute each other. I think for everyone, there is something that they can do that other people say it looks like so much work and it looks like it's so hard, but actually it's effortless and it's played for them. But everyone has something like that. So this is my reflection publicly. I wanted to also say thank you so, so much for watching my videos and for following me on this journey this year. It honestly means a ton to me. There have been little moments, specific comments, specific messages, specific moments. I've bumped into a few of you on the train in London and the response, it's just something that makes me keep going. It's not easy to keep consistently posting every single week, but what drives me to keep going is your feedback. So thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy the festive period. And if you have some time to binge watch some more videos, I left two of my favorite ones here. One is the six key habits that made me six figures. And the other one is my plan to become a millionaire by 32. Hope you enjoy them. See you next year.